Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you a really cool tutorial. I'm going to show you something that we normally only see in Houdini and Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you how you can transform an object into a vellum like object. How you can create sort of like a cloth effect out of an object, a transformation so to speak. So um, yeah, let's just dive straight in and as you could see also from the thumbnail, we are going to be creating a really realistic and nice result. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do the effect. You can access this file with the shading trick I also did uh, on my Patreon. And thank you so much for the two people that are on my Patreon. I promise to give you a shout out in the next couple of videos. And um, for you, uh, all your other ones, uh, uh, other ones supporting this channel, um, I'm really glad that you are here and supporting me. And if you uh, feel like you you can afford it, I would also appreciate if you could support me on Patreon because it will help me create more of these videos. But nevertheless, just you know, I'm just happy to help here on YouTube as well. So, but yeah, that's all. So let's just dive straight into the tutorial. And uh, in this scene here, you can see I have this rock here. And uh, what I'm going to show you is this sort of effect that we that we have here, um, where we can see the sort of let me just play it through, where we can see our cloth appearing uh, like a transformation out of the rock itself. A really cool technique. So let's just go through it. So in this scene here, the um, the simple scene here, let me just say, I have this rock here and um, over here you can see I just have a simple scene with a plane, a light, an HDRI also, and this empty, uh, just an empty cube. So this empty cube is going to be driving our club uh, transformation and the way it's going to do this is that we're going to apply a vertex ray proximity to this rock here. So under the modifier here, you can add a vertex weight proximity. And what this will give you is this menu here. So what are we going to do here? Well, first of all, we are going to make this empty. Like go from, from here over the scene and into our object. And we are going to be adding a proximity to this one. And uh, the way we are going to do this is that we are going into reselecting our object, then into edit mode, and then we are going into the uh, object data properties here, and we're going to, to click on plus and create this group here. And then we're just going to assign it. And this allows us to go into the modifier here, and onto the vertex group, we can add our group. And our target object should be our MC here. And then under the proximity mode, we're going to be choosing geometry and we are going to be setting a fall off to smooth here. And depending on your scene and your object, you have to play around with these, the lowest and highest value, depending on when and, and how much the proximity is going to affect our object. And what I mean by that is if we're going into the area up and the object mode and into the weight uh, paint mode here, you can see that our rock is, uh, is red here. And uh, what we have done over here in our modify is that the closer our empty is going to the object, we will start to see, oh, let me just turn it off on. We will start to see this effect kind of happening where our empty is driving this blue color onto our object, sort of like a, 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 a dynamic paint sort of effect. And what we want with this is that we want the cloth to be affecting in the blue area and not in the red area. So I'm going out of this mode again, and then I'm going into the next setting, which is adding a cloth um, physics up here. And um, I have already done this, and uh, so I'm uh, I've already baked the cloth, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, hopefully you can see here, but I'm going to run you through the settings. So under the cloth, um, I have set the quality steps to 15, 
turn down the speed multiplier a bit, added a bit of mass to the uh, each uh, vertex. And then under the stiffness and damping, I really turned everything down because I really want this, this sort of like wriggling effect happening in our uh, cloth. And uh, under the pressure, I added just a bit of pressure because uh, I didn't want it to make the rock just crumble all together. You can do that if you want, but I just thought it would be nice to still have a bit of um, volume in the rock. And uh, then I baked it, of course. And here it's important that under shape, we pick the group, under the pin group, we pick the group that we made in with our vertex uh, earlier on. And then the really trick with this effect is that under the shrinking factor, we're going to be adding a negative number. So we are going to be adding minus 0 0.15. Depending on your scene, it could be different. You have to experiment. But this is, allows us to grow the cloth out of the faces of our object. And uh, then under the collisions, I just set it to 12. And under the um, field weights, I turned the gravity all the way down. So what this allowed us to, to have is that we had this effect where you can see the growth appearing on our rock. Really nice and cool effect as you can see here. And now you might ask, but it doesn't really look that nice. You can see it's, the details are a bit rough. And what you can do now is afterwards, you can just add a subdivision uh, modifier here. And now you can see we really sort of have our wriggly cloth-like effect here. And when you then also combine that with a really nice shading, you get this really nice and interesting look. I should also say that I have also added a force wheel to drive the cloth more inwards towards the middle. And as you can see here, I have a force field that I just added minus 1000 to so that it sort of didn't fly all out of the scene. And also a bit of turbulence set at 200 to give um, the cloth a bit of flying around sort of effect as it would in, in real life. But these are not the important ones. The important thing is that you have the cloth and the vertex weight and the subdivision, of course, um, you know, set correctly. And you really have to experiment with your own settings, but just know that it's possible. You can see here and you can access this file, uh, as I said earlier on my Patreon, to really dive into the materials and the settings yourself. And if you're not up for that, just uh, just experiment yourself. It's a really fun way to work with modifiers in Blender. And you can see here, if I scroll around, we have this really soft, really nice effect. And it's all happening as sort of this um, vertex weight is striving. I have seen other people doing it with dynamic paint, but you can just use this modifier here. It's really easy. And um, and then you can add a cloth, or you could add a displacement modifier. You could you could do all sort of things with this effect here, um, and you know texturing really go into the the, the texturing of of this one here. Um, yeah, I just think it's a really nice effect. Um, so yeah, hopefully you got something out of this, and uh, leave me a comment, a like. It really helps uh, this channel out. Remember to subscribe, leave a comment if you have an issue with something uh, yourself when doing this effect. Um, and yeah, I've spent hours the last two days figuring out how exactly I, I um, should set the settings for this one. So uh, I'm happy to finally have found uh, out and uh, but also happy to show you guys that we can do the same as all those, uh, not quite the same, but almost the same as all those crazy Houdini people. Um, so yeah, um, happy to share this with you and uh, see you next time. Um, yeah, have a great day. Bye.